lecture on forces and couples and moments. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to simplify a system of forces and couples. So first, let's look at why we're doing this. So for some problems in the traffic lights that you're seeing on the left figure, uh, the weight of traffic lights is going to create a moment. We can find the moment of each of those, combine them, reduce the system, simplify, and just move everything to one point. And that's the point, whether you're using a bolt or welding them together, and that's all we care about. So instead of dealing with forces of weight right where they are, and finding the moment and stuff like that, I can just move everything to one point and deal with one moment and one force and it's much simpler. Another example that you're seeing, um, the two figures on the right, this is an H beam or I beam um, and kind of bolted to a foundation. And for some reason it, it has, what, two forces, F1 and F2, and a moment um, that is applied to it. And in order to design those bolts or the weld of the I-beam to the foundation plate, it is sometimes much easier to just replace everything, bring everything back to point O, and replace it by just one force and one moment. It's much, much easier to deal with that um, and now go about designing those bolts and foundation plate. So now we're gonna learn what happens when you start moving forces around. Can we even move forces around? So here's an example. The goal is move F to point B and see what happens. Okay, so it's just a beam. Someone is pulling on it, someone is holding it at point B and we want to find can we move F to point B and what happens if we do it. So let's add a plus and minus F to point B. So adding F and minus F add B. That shouldn't affect anything on this beam, right? The whole point is this person that is holding this B beam at point B shouldn't feel any difference by moving that force there. So adding F and minus F at point B. Now let's see. Now let me this force use this force to cancel this F. As a result, I can get force F at point B. So F is now moved to point B. Okay, goals achieved. So in this case, I was able to just slide force F and bring it to point B. Well, what if I have a beam like this? Again, the goal is the same goal. Move force F to point B and see what happens. Okay. I'm going to do the exact same thing, adding F and minus F, add B. All right. Can I cancel F and the other F by each other? Can I do it? Also, I want you to think about it for a couple of seconds. Can I cancel those two or no? If you didn't know anything about moments and stuff like that, you probably would have said yes. Just cancel those, F is moved, done. But we just learned in previous lecture something about two parallel forces, same magnitude, opposite direction, at a distance. At a distance, D. We just learned that. What do we call that? A couple and also we learned that you can replace a couple by its vector so magnitude of the couple is going to be F D so I'm gonna get rid of it replace it by a vector 
goal achieved. So f is now moved at b, but in this case, but we have created a moment at b because we moved f. Okay, so in both of these cases, case A, case B, not a very smart choice of letters because there are A and B in figures, but anyway, you, you know what I'm saying. A and B, we both moved A, move force F. So why did one of them was really easy? We slide it. One of them, it created a moment because we moved it. Because on case B, we didn't slide it. We didn't move it on what? Not on its line of action. You see here, line of action of F, let me use a different color. This is line of action of F. And I just moved F on its line of action. I slide it and nothing happened. You can move it and put it anywhere. But here, this is line of action of F. And I didn't move it on its line of action. I put it somewhere else. And that's why it created that moment. So remember, any time that you move a force and it's not on its line of action, you are messing with a lot of stuff and you're creating a coupled uh, moment. So we call force is a sliding vector means it can slide on its line of action so here's here's kind of like a general um, representation again this is my potato I have force F and I would like to move it around and put it at a different point and here's kind of like the beam but in a um, 3d format so I added plus and minus F at O. So move, again, the goal is move F to O. So I've added plus F minus F. And I want you to look at these two. What do you see? Parallel forces separated by a distance. Um, and up, same magnitude, opposite direction. So I replace that by a couples moment, which now this is a vector format and it's R cross F. So let's read what it says in the box. Force vector F cannot be simply moved to O without modifying its effect on the body. Attaching equal and opposite force vectors at O produces no net change of effect on the body. The three forces may be replaced by an equivalent force vector and couple vector. In other words, a force couple system. Okay, now let's look at a more crazy potato here. It has a bunch of forces and I want, so the goal is move all forces to O and hopefully simplify and re replace it by something better. And again, look here, what happened when I moved? So kind of ignore the middle image, just look at A and C. When I moved it, I created an R cross F also. So what I'm doing, so F is moved right there, but I've also added R cross F. So um, the forces, R that I have on uh, point C is just summation of forces or in other words it's just summation of F's in vector format but I've moved them and it's not on line of action or it could be on line of action I don't know but just to be safe because I'm moving it the M about OR 
is a summation of each of the r cross f's that I put there. In other words, it is m1 plus m2 plus m3. So I moved f1 2.0 and it created a moment m1. f2 moved 2.0 created a mo moment m2 and so on for f3. And now I just simply added the moments together and added the forces together. So one important thing that I want you to remember is, yes, they're all vectors, but there is a big difference between them. This vector is a force multiplied by distance, and this is just the force. So even their units are different. This is newtons. This is pound. This is newton meters or pound inch or pound foot. So yes, you, you in the figure B, you see all F and M's and they're all vectors, but you cannot just add everything together and just replace it by one vector because their essence is different. One is force, one is force multiplied by a distance. So in general, in general, I wanna add something here. I want to say, hey, there was a moment C one present here. It was present. It was a couple's moment already there. Okay. And let's do that. Moment C two was already there. And someone asked, can you simplify this? So when you move everything, these are free vectors not free vectors so when you move the free vectors you can just simply move them and put them at point O without messing anything okay so in general R or FR some books call it is summation of forces summation of all forces and mr about o is summation of r cross f's plus summation of all couples moment summation of moments created because we moved forces when you move forces you're going to create moments summation of already existing couples moment on the body so these two are the main oh sorry are the main general equations that we're going to use to simplify forces and a system of forces and couples in this chapter in the next video i will go over multiple examples of uh, systems being simplified and being uh, reduced